The Lions surprised everyone. It's what's it been? Eighteen days? Why? Why would you do that? Damn. There's no reason. It was the Lions. It's kneecap okay. time. We gotta get we gotta get physical here. <laughs> you made the comment the other day about chomping on kneecaps, and somebody actually emailed me and tried to call it a simsism. It's like, have you not paid attention to the last two years of right. Detroit Lions? Right. The whole kneecap thing. Right. So. Anything's kneecap. They yeah. don't chop at the bit, they yeah. chop at the you kneecap the in kneecap. Detroit. Right. So they're chopping at the kneecap to get Jameer Gibbs up to speed. He missed some of the Rookie minicamp had some sort of an ankle thing, but he met with reporters and he was asked about this notion that the Lions, who had traded from six down to 12 and then picked the Alabama running back there, reached in that spot to get him. Here's what Gibbs had to say. You admitted you were surprised that you were drafted that high when the Lions took you. Yeah. After the draft was over, I don't know if you heard, but people said, oh, that was the one reach that a team made. The Lions went too high. Did you hear that? And what did you think about that? I mean, yeah. Like a reach? I mean, I heard it, but everybody's entitled to their opinion. I mean, I really don't. Right. I really don't care. So. I mean, that's all he that's can say. That's legitimate. Don't that's care, That's all he too. can say. Right. I really don't care. Yeah. I really don't care. It doesn't matter to me. I've got no control over this process. I didn't argue that I should be drafted higher than anybody else. I just show up, and I find out when my name's called. That's right. And that's the end of it. Right. Whichever team takes me, and it's always good for the player to be drafted higher than otherwise because you make more money the higher your pick now you could still argue it's good to land in a spot where you're going to play and you're going to play well and everything is going to develop properly sure. it's a short-term win if you get drafted higher long-term loss if you get drafted higher to a crap team whereas if you had fallen in another spot or two or five or ten or wherever you're in a great spot and you're a hall of famer and everything goes along with it yeah and those are all alternate universes we never get a chance to explore but we know that it's a factor we know that one guy is going to be potentially better in one place than he would have been in another place. We just don't have any way to prove it. No, you're right. It's hard. It's, we, we talk about it all the time, right? I mean, yeah, it, 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 is, it is hard to prove it. This is the perfect situation for Jameer Gibbs, though. I mean, perfect. Has everything you kind of just talked about. He got drafted high. They got a good old line. They got good receivers, a quarterback. He got it all there with this pick right there. And he's special, let alone this is a coaching staff that – came from New Orleans before this with Sean Payton, so they have a, wait, we'd like to use an Alvin Kamarish type of guy, right? Uh, so I think there's that element, let alone, you know, Sean Payton, and we talk about it all the time, is rooted, that, that group is rooted in physicality too. Size, run the ball. Bill Parcells taught Sean Payton a lot of this type of stuff. So they believe in that too, to be smash mouth. He's going to get a ton of touches. He's a special player. Like we talked about in the draft process, there was only a few guys where you could go, here's the ball, and he can score from anywhere. And he was one of them. So, okay, you know, all the draft pundits said he should be drafted in the 20s. They thought he was a top-tier running back in the same class as B. John Robinson. They had a need for it in their offense. Who cares, right, that they drafted him eight spots too high? Who cares when it's all said and done? If you had a position that you needed and you addressed it with the exact player you wanted it, is there is there really who cares if you if you did it eight picks too high and and then took the risk off of not getting him at all and letting somebody else steal him in the process? They did the same thing six spots later. When they exactly. Took so there, I'm not mad at we, it. We talked about it at the time they had yeah. conviction in what they wanted. They knew what they, they wanted. wanted exactly. And, right. Like could have had Bijan Robinson at six. They trade down to twelve. What they they didn't pick up a whole lot. Not a ton. You're six right. Spots. You're right. But maybe they like Gibbs more than Robinson. I mean, that's the thing. What I don't think it's as big a gap as the draft world made it be. Right. I know I was one that had them both in the same tier. Yeah. Right. Bijan was twenty pounds heavier, and he's awesome. But Bijan can't go seventy to the house like this kid can. And I think that's where it kind of closed the gap a little bit, in my opinion. And, and that's one of the realities with what I call the draft industrial complex. You've got all these people who aren't working for teams who are doing their own scouting, but also supplementing it with what they're hearing Definitely. from teams. They, right. they want to get their boards right. So they're listening to what the teams are saying yes. because teams may view guys differently than the people who are doing it on their own. You do it completely. I don't know if you do it completely on your own. But I really do. I have a more talks of after the process, right? My, my friends aren't going to tell me like, oh, hey, here's my top three receivers or whatever. We just talk players, right? That's what I do. But what happens is you do get that disconnect sometimes. I yeah. Mean, look at Patrick Mahomes. Like, if everybody knew what Andy Reid, Sean Payton, and Mike McCarthy thought of Patrick Mahomes back in 2017, yeah. he would have been expected to be the number one overall pick, or at least the first quarterback that yeah. year. That was the Miles Garrett year, right. so who knows? Right. But a lot of it is 
who's keeping their mouths shut and who isn't. And maybe some people were keeping their mouths shut about Jameer Gibbs. And, you know, if the Lions didn't take him at 12, who knows what would have happened? Who knows how long he would have been there? The teams that may have taken him after that have no cause to come out and say yeah, right. we would have we taken, taken him. him right. They've got no reason to do right. that whatsoever. They have to rally around the guys they pick. That's part of it. So yeah. I think there's a lot of teams that had him as a top 20 player in the draft, right? Now, whether they would have taken him in the top 20 or whatever else, that's a different story. But I know I talked to enough teams to know that, like, oh, oh no, Jameer Gibbs is definitely one of the 20 best players in this draft. Definitely, definitely, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, I don't think it was as crazy. And, again, the, the whole draft pundits and all that, you're right. There's a little bit of their own evaluation, you know. I, I'm, I'm going to be a jerk here with this comment. Some of them I want to go, I don't know how they got this platform to evaluate anything anyways. I don't know. Who are you talking about? I, I'm not going to get into it. Who, but who, some who, of them I just want to go, what? They've, I, they've never been in an NFL anything. They've never been on a football field. But they're telling me what team should draft. Uh, there, there's a lot of that. I'm so very that, curious who you're referring to. There's a few of them out there where you just go, what? Well, who? then you could name one. Well, who's ever taught them? Who's <laughs> ever done this? Where have they ever learned anything from? But they got a big Twitter following and some other things, and we're supposed to listen to what they say on the draft. So that, the whole process confuses the situation there. Sorry, that was my little spiel of Monday morning. The issue with running backs is twofold, in my view. Yeah. Number one, supply outweighs demand. Right. And the question becomes – can you get someone multiple rounds later who isn't that much lesser of a player? And yeah, are you getting right. more talent for your draft spot right. at another position? I got Somebody you. else out there with a gap is right. bigger right. at 12 or at 15 or at 7 I or wherever right. when I know I can find an Alvin Kamara in round three. Yeah. Or I can find a James Robinson undrafted, an Arian Foster undrafted, up an Austin Eckler undrafted. Where is the better value? And I don't think the Lions cared. The Lions wanted who they wanted. They got who they got. But the other side of it, too, because this is the thing that can make Jameer Gibbs or B. John Robinson come off as a bust. If you get injured, well, the position is conducive to injury, to injury yeah, right. because you are in, as you call it, aptly car crashes over and over and over again so if it does happen and it's not like some random fluke thing we know it's going to happen right Saquon Barkley great rookie year 2,000 yards from scrimmage everything's great now now we know why he was the second overall pick in the draft ankle injury against the Buccaneers week four I believe in 2019 and that started the downward slide Definitely. he tore an ACL the next year right but that's not his fault. That's the position. Yeah. You that's get you hit. You get in hit in awkward decision. ways. You're going right. to get injured. You're not right. Superman. Emmett Smith is the only one I've seen, and Marshawn Lynch to a certain extent, who is impervious to the whole, you know, getting banged around in every possible direction and still finding a way to keep going. Emmett was the king of it. Marshawn Lynch more recently, the guy who just found a way to play no matter what. And that's special, and there's no way to gauge that based upon college experience. And whatever they do at the college level, it's going to be even harder at the NFL level to stay healthy. But that's another reason to shy away from a running back yeah. because you're accepting this risk right. that this is the most dangerous position on the field. I'm going to lose that guy for yeah. weeks, maybe months, maybe years. Right, and, it's a, and I put a very expensive asset into getting him, right? You're right. That's exactly the risk. I think they looked at it and went, no, the guy's special. And I think to your point and what you talked about, a way in that value, they went, wait, there's a huge gap between, you know, these top two running backs and then the third running back on the board, right? And I think that's probably why they were very comfortable with going, wait, we know we need this type of football player. He takes us over the top on the offensive side of the ball. And I think that's why they were willing to be a little unpopular with the draft pundits of the world and take them eight, ten spots too early. But like you said, I think they're a team that's very particular. I think they're a team, when you think about Dan Campbell and the group that's there, Ben Johnson and uh, Spielman and everybody, that they are a team that had their board and were like, wait, we have two or three guys that we want at linebacker. And that's it, because we think they're Lions guys. They bite kneecaps. We have two or three guys at running back we want, right? I think you even brought this up right after the draft. They have a short list of what they felt like were their culture type of guys, and I think that's why they were willing to draft those guys a few spots early, too. And it goes to what they're trying to build, and it just builds on what they've done so far the past couple of years. It kind of bottomed out the middle of the 2022 season, and then it's taken off, and now they're the darlings of the NFL with yeah. the opening game on NBC Thursday, September 8th. 
Lions at the Chiefs, and the Lions, a very attractive team throughout the season, a Thursday night game against the Packers. Isn't that wild? They play the Packers on a Thursday night, and then they host the Packers on Thanksgiving. So they play the Packers this year on two Thanksgivings. That's right. got to be a first, that that the same two teams have played four play days. each other <laughs> right. on the same day of the week. They play on Thursday night, week four, and then Thanksgiving week 12 that is odd and uh, there's a monday night game against the raiders and maybe somewhere on the back end they end up slipping into prime Some time flex. either sunday night or monday night remember yeah. this year's the first year of the possible right monday night flex hi it's mike florio thanks for watching pft on youtube hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from pro football talk